Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a new PC from Lenovo. This is their Legion C530. It starts at $879. It's pretty compact, as you can see here. It's got a handle so you can carry it around to events and whatnot. And it's a gaming PC, but these are also good for video editing and other high performance tasks, especially if you've got something where you need to transport your hardware around with you. Uh, the starting price is pretty reasonable, and it's got a 6-core i5-8400 at the low end. It's also got 8 gigs of RAM, a 7200 RPM 1TB drive paired up with 16 gigabytes of Intel Octane cache, and it's got an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti. So for a compact PC, not a bad price to start. There's a few other configurations too that we'll get into in a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this PC is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. I really like the fact that a lot of these gaming PCs are not looking as obnoxious as they used to. Uh, there is some lighting on this one. This top portion here will light up red and you'll have a white light here on the Legion logo, but there is no other colored lighting or anything blinking or anything else like that. So it's pretty subdued uh, for a gaming focused machine, partly because I think this will appeal to more than just gamers. Uh, you can see what it looks like on the top here because they have actually segmented the case into two sections. One is the motherboard with the graphics chips and everything else. And then on the other side, you have your hard drives and your power supply. And I'll take it apart here so you can see what goes on inside. So we'll pull off the side panel first. This is where the power supply and the storage is. Uh, so you've got a 450 watt power supply. Not huge, but for what this is, it's fine. Uh, and then you've also got where the hard drive is mounted. This is a full size uh, three and a half inch hard drive. Uh, there's also room for another one in there and they've left cables on the other side of the device here so that you can uh, get more storage installed in it if you want. And in fact, one of those SATA cables is waiting for you uh, right over here. So there is some room to grow on this one. On the other side, what you do is just pull off this uh, little tab here, this little lock, and you can open it up like so. And we'll pop in and take a look at some of the other components here. Uh, so here is that six core i5 processor. It looks like it's got one of those basic uh, uh, in the box kind of fans and heat sinks to it, but you could always replace that. I believe you could actually replace the entire processor if you wanted to do that. Uh, the graphics card is here. Again, this is a 1050 Ti. Uh, they will sell a version with a i7 chip and a GTX 1060 that will go over $1,000. They've also got one for just under $1,000 with an AMD uh, RX 570. So there are a few different configurations you can look at. And down the road, you can also swap things out. You've got a single PCI Express uh, 16X slot in here, so you could easily pop this card out and pop in another one. You've even got some uh, power coming off the power supply for those GPUs if you need it. Uh, this one has 8 gigs of RAM, but only one stick of that RAM. Uh, so it's DDR4, but right now it's in single channel mode. So you would get a little more performance if you did uh, put in another memory stick or ordered it with 16, where they would populate both of those sockets. Uh, the maximum on this is uh, 32 gigabytes. And right here is where that Intel Optane module is. This one's a 16 gigabyte module. And what this will do is give you faster load times for things that you're uh, running on the computer frequently. You can't really manually configure it. It just kind of sits in the background looking at your behavior and it tries to put things that you will be accessing frequently uh, into that memory there essentially so that it loads up quicker than what the spinning hard drive can do for you. So if you want more storage, but you like the way an SSD feels, uh, this kind of gives you the best of both worlds within reason, at least with the applications that you're loading frequently. And I think it'll move things off and on depending on uh, what you're up to. So I think if you're playing a, a one game very frequently, you'll probably see some speed increase with that. Uh, you've got another SATA uh, port there available to you on the motherboard, it appears. So it looks like kind of a basic computer that you could maybe build yourself. Uh, but if you aren't ready to do that or just don't have the time, you can get this and over time add or take away from it as you see fit. And I really do like how they've segmented both portions of the case here for 
uh, thermals. And the only thing that some folks might not like is all the wires they have coiled up here on the side. Uh, this actually does look better than what I remembered the prior edition of the Cube looking. So it's not the best cable management, but it is better. And I think to some degree, it's nice having these cables available in a off-the-shelf computer for upgrading at a later time. Now, there are a number of ports on here, but there are some things that are lacking, namely USB-C and Thunderbolt. Uh, so on the front here, you've got two USB 3.0 ports along with uh, your headset jack and a microphone jack. So you can plug your uh, most important stuff in on the front here. That's pretty easy to get at. On the back, there are a few more ports available. So the first is the uh, GPU's output. So on this particular GPU, we've got DisplayPort, HDMI, and DVI. Uh, some GPUs might have additional ports on that uh, second uh, panel right there. Over here, you've got Gigabit Ethernet two USB 2.0 ports, yes, the slower 2.0 version, and they make up for those slower ports with two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports right here that can run it up to 10 gigabits per second. So if you've got some high-speed SSDs or something, you can pop them in there. And you've got two more USB 3.0 ports right here. Uh, this little stopper here is for the motherboard HDMI, which is not used, but you could probably pull it off and use it if you ever wanted to. Uh, over here is a headphone jack, and then on the back is where you also plug in that power supply. And it looks like they've got this strap here, I'm assuming for cable management, so you can adjust it and get all your cables nicely uh, tucked behind there if you want. But again, no Thunderbolt on this one, which I would have liked to have seen on one of these devices, uh, and no USB-C either, but it does have ports for uh, what you would probably use with it. And in addition to the Ethernet port, it does support 802.11 AC wireless. It's got a 2x2 radio. It also has Bluetooth 4.2 built in. Uh, weight on this is 20 pounds or 8.9 kilograms. It's actually pretty easy to carry around here with the handle. Uh, so it is you know, big and bulky and clunky, but it's certainly smaller than a desktop computer usually is. So it's not all that difficult to uh, carry it around to whatever events you are going to. So that is the overall hardware. Uh, we're going to take a look now and see how it performs. We're going to start off with some benchmarks and then look at a few games and have some additional commentary after that. So we're going to kick things off with the 3D Mark Time Spy test. This runs in DirectX 12. And there we got a score of 2,491. And check out the CPU score on that test, about 14 and a half frames per second. And that score on this year's i5 is about the same as what we saw out of the i7 that was in last year's Lenovo Cube portable desktop PC there. So you can see this i5 chip is really pretty quick. Now the GPU here appears to be performing about the same as other 1050 Ti GPUs we have looked at. So it looks like the 1050 Ti is performing as expected here, which is good. Uh, it's not, though, good for VR in its base level configuration. The processor is fine for that, but you do need a more powerful GPU. Typically, you need to start with that 1060 to get decent VR performance out of a PC. So let's take a look and see how it performs playing games. We've got GTA 5 here running at 1080p with the lowest settings. We were getting frame rates between 115 and 150 frames per second. So you should be able to get a nice balance of performance and visual quality there. The Witcher 3, which is usually taxing our lower end PCs quite a bit, was able to go between 65 and 75 frames per second. Again, low settings at 1080p. The new version of Doom was running between 80 and 100 frames per second at the low settings. So good performance out of Doom there. Rocket League was really humming along, 240 to 250 frames per second. In fact, the game, I believe, hard caps out at 250, uh, running 1080p at the lowest setting. So you could probably get decent visuals at 60 frames per second there. And Fortnite at low settings was running quite nicely on here at 1080p, uh, well over 140 frames per second in our testing. So you could easily uh, do some graphical tweaks, bring it down closer to 60 and have it look pretty decent. Uh, so altogether, pretty good for running most of the games that are out there. Certainly not as powerful as a bigger and more expensive PC, but for the entry point here, I think it does quite well. Now, one last thing to check out on here, and that is its Linux compatibility. We booted up Ubuntu 18.10, and everything worked just fine with the exception of Bluetooth, so keep that in mind. But Wi-Fi, audio, video, everything else seemed to be uh, booting up and functioning as expected. So that was good to see on here. And overall, it's a nicely put together computer. I like the 
Form factor, I like the case, the handle and everything. It's a pretty powerful computer for its size and price point. I think 879 is not a bad deal considering what it's got under the hood. Uh, you could probably build one for less, of course, but if you are looking to just get something you can take out of the box and has uh, support and a warranty, this might be worth considering. And definitely check out some of the other configurations that are available with this. But I think what you might want to do is start with the low end, see how that works for you, and then maybe upgrade down the road. Uh, the Optane thing here didn't make that much of a difference to me in using the computer. I did find it sped a couple of things up, but not everything. So I still think a SSD is probably the better way to go if you have the choice between the Optane or a built-in SSD. So that's going to do it again for the C530. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Too Much Sauce, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.